Hello. You might have heard that. Let me just turn off this candle. <laughs> That's a lot of smoke. You might have heard that I've dropped a new workshop with Mr. Finn Beals, at Finn, for those of you who don't know him. And I think it's my best yet because I was able to jump behind the camera and focus on Finn himself and how he approaches things. Then by the end I did a little episode where I shoot stuff and I demonstrate as well, but I wanted to focus on the content a lot and all, a lot of the things that Finn has to add to the table, which is huge because he's been shooting for 10 years now. He's a veteran. So I want to give you today a free episode of the workshop and it's a really useful one. It's called M3 E4 Shooting Techniques, 50 and Stitch. And it's got this really cool name. <laughs> it's a technique that Finn has developed. It's a custom shooting thing he does where he is able to shoot a very wide angle image that still has shallow depth of field. So you kind of get best of both worlds and it kind of brings the subject in. And I don't know, I just feel like whenever I watch one of these photos shot like that, I feel like I'm really immersed into that scene. So it's one of the 37 episodes of the workshop and today you're getting it for free. So now I want to walk you through one of the key techniques I use on most of my shoots. It's called 50 and stitch. This is not an official name, but it's something I've labeled. Um, I call it 15 stitch because it's shot with a 50 millimeter lens. This lens is my desert island lens. I have it on my camera most of the time, but it's not very wide. What do I want? To, what do I do if I want to shoot a wide scene? I stitch together a bunch of different images. The nice thing about a telephoto lens, a 50 millimeter or an 85, you can do this technique with an 85 as well, is it compresses distance. The background of an image comes closer to something in the foreground. If I shoot a scene with a 24 mil lens, it gives me all that space, the wide image, but the background subjects are pushed away from the foreground. What I want to do is bring everything closer, it connects my foreground to my background. Depth perception is exaggerated with a 24 mil lens. Telephoto lenses do the opposite. So we're gonna take my desert island lens and shoot this technique and I'll walk you through the different processes as I do it. Okay. So I have my focus set on this, this button here, back focus. So what I'm doing is framing my subject in the center, focus, half depress this shutter button, which locks my focus on that vehicle. So then I'll shoot this, adjust the frame, and pick out the rest of the scenes. Slight overlap on each one. Look through the viewfinder when you do this. And then to help the edit, when you import all of these images into Lightroom, if you're doing a few of these successionally, you can, it's hard to tell the difference between one stitch and another. So what I do is I just switch the focus to manual, just put my hand over, shoot. So then I got a cut. I've got a black frame in my Lightroom film strip. Just speeds up editing. Another benefit of this technique is it gives you a massive resolution file. By stitching together eight separate images, you're creating a huge working space. So if you want to shoot a billboard image for a client or something and you can't afford a Hasselblad, shoot a 50 and stitch, you'll get the same resolution or same like cropping factor. So you can really drill down on an image, pick out details in post. If you've seen the field day episodes already, you may remember me demonstrating a technique called 50 and stitch, where I was using a 50 millimeter lens to shoot a wide angle scene. Um, I think I talked about a few benefits of the technique, but I'll just recap them here. Uh, one, you don't have to change your lens 
from shooting close-ups with your 50mm and then switching to a wide angle scene. Two, you can create a huge file which gives you great, um, a great cropping factor or print resolution. Um, three, a 50mm lens will compress distance so it'll bring background elements closer to the foreground more than a 24mm might and also you can play with depth of field um, with a 50mm lens it, it can really throw out the background um, blurring out um, and introduce great bokeh into the image uh, and does it m more beautifully than the 24 or, or do it more drastically than the 24mm lens can you may also remember me shooting a picture of my hand switching it into manual focus taking a picture of my hand switching it back to water focus locking on my subject clicking and then stitching the frames around and then when i'd finished switching it back into manual focus and taking another picture of my hand you may have been thinking why is he doing that well let's have a look at lightroom and i think it'll become pretty clear so when you import your card everything's going to come in sequentially and be ordered according to capture time so that's one after the other straight away you may have noticed this blank frame here and a hand frame here so i now know that everything in between these two frames is part of a 50 and stitch so all i need to do is select them all and hit Control m which tells Lightroom to create a panoramic image from all of those um, separate frames. Had I not shot these blank frames, I wouldn't know where the stitch started and where it ended. So Lightroom's just done its thing. There are a few projection methods up here. Um, perspective obviously looks horrendous. <laughs> Um, is really distorting everything. Uh, so I think perspective's great for landscape scenes where everything's quite flat, but where we've got a focal point, it's, it's not going to work for me. And so let's try cylindrical. No, yeah, looks much better. I'm going to try spherical as well, for argument's sake. No, I don't like that. That looks more like a fisheye lens. You can see the distortion in the Land Rover here. So we'll switch back to cylindrical and we'd hit merge to, to, to instruct Lightroom to merge everything together and create one big file. Now rather than doing that again, let's just show you this one, which is one I have done earlier. Um, you can see I've taken out the dog and taken out the people using the clone tool. But you can see here I've got a really massive file. 11,324.90059. And you can see the depth of field at work here. This background's really thrown out of focus in a more dramatic fashion than a 24mm lens would give me. Have fun with it. Send me some examples. I'd love to see them. Um, yeah, that's it. That was the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more things like that and even more useful stuff, make sure to pre-order the workshop that's actually... Pre-order closes on Wednesday. It's in two days. So make sure to pre-order jump in and pre-order price because it's 50% off. You can still enroll after, but it'd be more expensive. So jump in.